Daily Devotion Read 1 Peter 5 7 During Our Darkest Days A Testimony by Grace D. June 3rd A seemingly ordinary day turned into grief and disbelief. It was the first week of GCQ. That day, my husband, Joseph, woke up early to go to the market. He planned to cook a dish for an elderly sister whom we would be visiting. After we both attended our businesses during the day, we left the house around 5 p.m. to bring our cooked dish to the elderly sister. This was actually a typical day in our life. We worked during the day, and at night, we visited or met up with brothers and sisters in Christ, attended small group gatherings or other church service meetings. Pandemic or no pandemic, this was our lifestyle. The only difference now is that the meetups are virtual instead of the physical meet. I thank the Lord that our married life was very blessed. For 33 years, my husband had been my partner and my best friend. We loved the Lord together. We served the church together. We did things together, especially during the pandemic. We spent quality time together. We drew mutual support and strength from each other. Going back to June 3rd, after dropping off the food to the elderly sister, we arrived home at 6.30 p.m. Joseph suddenly felt slight chest congestion. Since he had no history of heart problems, he thought it was his acid reflux acting up again. So, he took his medication. But the congested feeling persisted. Therefore, we decided to check his blood pressure. We were shocked to see that it was at 162-107. After a few minutes, his BP rose to 213-129. We both got alarmed and decided to go to the emergency room. As we were about to leave, my husband suddenly got dizzy and felt numb. In just a second, he closed his eye and never opened them again. I was in disbelief. It felt unreal. I couldn't believe that my husband had truly left. How I wished it was just a dream. We were only together moments ago. And now I saw his body being transferred from the emergency room to the morgue. My whole body shook and turned weak. I was speechless and in a state of shock. I had never felt so lost in my entire life. Then came another devastating development. I learned that I could not give my husband a proper burial. Due to the pandemic, even though he died of a heart attack, he was considered a COVID-19 suspect. I was not even allowed to witness the cremation. After three hours, the funeral agent just handed me his ashes placed inside an urn. I felt overwhelmingly alone and helpless. I can relate a hundred percent with the pitiful traveler in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Like him, I felt robbed, stripped, left half dead, alone, and helpless. I was robbed of someone very precious to me. I was stripped of my sense of security, my rock. However, during this period of profound grief and pain, I immediately turned to the Lord as I have always done in my long walk with Him through the years. Like the Good Samaritan who helped the fallen traveler, the Lord also helped me and never abandoned me. Whenever I cried, every time I prayed and called on His name, I always felt His reassuring love and presence. He reminded me of these words in 1 Peter 5 7, It matters to Him concerning you. Yes, it matters to my Lord concerning me. He knows when I'm sad. He understands when I'm down. The Lord always reaches me where I am. Moreover, in this entire period of mourning, other than the Lord as the Good Samaritan, what uplifted me the most is the experience of being in the inn with so many neighbors, brothers and sisters, extending their love and care towards me. Since I rushed Joseph to the ER, and the brothers and sisters found out about the news, there was always someone by my side to help me or simply be with me. The Lord knows that I have no immediate family here with me. 
My only son is abroad. My siblings are all in Taiwan. My husband's relatives are mostly in Canada. The pandemic had robbed us of the opportunity to be together during this time of grief. So, the Lord arranged for my spiritual family to be with me. Reflection Friends, let me take this opportunity to tell you that if you are going through something similar to what I have gone through and am still going through, open yourself to the Lord as the Good Samaritan. Ask Him to bind your wounds and pour oil and wine. Come rest at the inn, the church life, and experience God's love through our brothers and sisters. This is God's complete tender care prepared for anyone willing to come. Prayer Lord, I pray that we experience you as the Good Samaritan during the darkest times of our life. May our stories comfort others who need encouragement, too. Allow us to be a donkey who can bring others to the inn, especially when they are hurt and in need of healing, to glorify you alone. As 2 Corinthians 1 4 said, We experience your compassion and comfort, that we may be able to comfort those who are in every affliction, through the comforting with which we ourselves are comforted by God.